What's up guys? Today I've got a quick video for you covering a super common failure on the N20 engines, the turbocharger. From wastegate rattle all the way up to just complete turbo failure, these cars are notorious for having issues with these and the replacements aren't cheap. Original BMW is almost 3000 US dollars and even the OE Mitsubishi is still around 1400. There's also different upgrades you can do, stage one, stage two, but we're not gonna cover that here. Today, we're gonna rebuild this turbo to original spec for less than $500 in parts, and it's a lot easier than you think. Taking a closer look, and this turbo has two issues. So first off, when you spin the turbine, it should be nice and smooth with little to no resistance. This one is very notchy. As I'm turning it, there's kind of a grinding noise, and it just doesn't spin freely at all. Then the wastegate is also a bit loose. Honestly, it's not that bad, and if the rest of the turbo was still good, I'd probably just leave it, but since we're replacing everything anyway, I might as well do this too. This turbo is from Project 328i, so go check that out if you haven't already. But I'm not exactly sure what happened with this, as when I bought the car, it wasn't running, but I do know for sure that this is definitely no good to go back onto the engine. We're going to start with the center housing rotating assembly, which is also called the CHRA. You can find these online from China for just over 100 bucks, but I'd recommend going with a more reputable supplier and you get the whole rotating assembly balanced and ready to go. So all we need to do is swap in the parts. For the wastegate, I won't go too in depth here as I already have a whole other video talking specifically about this issue on some N63 turbos and it's basically the same process here. You mark the position of the old arm, grind it off, remove the flapper, press out the old bushing, press in a new bushing, new flapper, new arm, weld it together and you're good to go. I'm going to start by disconnecting these hoses. These can sometimes get stuck on here pretty good with the heat cycles. Yum. Now we're going to remove the wastegate actuator. So first I'm going to start by removing this pin. It gets really rusty and over time, honestly, sometimes they just completely disintegrate. So if you don't have one here, that's probably what happened. And obviously you'll need to replace this with a new one when we're putting it all back together. And now to actually get the CHRA, it's very easy. There's one V-band here. We're gonna loosen this and that's gonna disconnect the entire exhaust side of the turbo. We should be able to pop this open. Okay, and now with that removed, this will technically separate. Now, obviously with the corrosion, this has been on the car for over 10 years, this is gonna be a little bit hard to separate, but at this point, there's nothing left holding the manifold onto the turbo. Well, unfortunately, that's not working the way I wanted it to, so we're gonna have to try and break this corrosion another way. That was easy. Okay, so now that that's separated, I've also gone ahead and ground off the old flapper arm. Now we're gonna come back on this side, and as you can see, there's a really big circ clip that's holding the CHRA into this part of the assembly. You need some really good quality snap ring pliers to deal with snap rings that are this big. And since there's so much corrosion, I had to tap this a couple times with a chisel just to break that corrosion free. Now I'll be able to separate it. Okay, be really careful when you're dealing with these because they're under so much tension, it's really easy to slip and have them fly either across the room or right into your face. And now these two halves should just separate. Wow, easier than I thought. So that's what this half looks like. And here is our CHRA. Not sure if you can hear that. 
Then if I compare that to the new one, trying not to get it too dirty, you don't hear a sound and it spins very freely. Now that we've got this fully disassembled, I'm going to throw both of these empty housings into the blast cabinet just to clean up some of this rust. Now that these look brand new, we're going to start with the reassembly. First, I'm going to tackle the new wastegate flapper. Again, check out the other video if you want the step-by-step -step on how to do it. Right now, I'm going to weld it back on off camera and then I'll continue with the CHRA. Here's what that looks like. Now this is nice and tight. And then here you can see the new bushing, the new pin that was welded in. And then on the actual flapper, it's normal that this part has play in it. So look, even this brand new one can move around. That's normal because you want it to make a perfect seal every time. So when you're inspecting yours, if you see this, don't worry. What you want to avoid is that side to side play when you're moving the arm in the bushing. Now we can start putting this back together. So we'll start by lubing up the O-ring. And then what's nice about the BMW turbos is that it's impossible to install these the wrong way because there's an alignment pin right here. A lot of cars don't have that, so you have to manually line it up. But now all we have to do is just sandwich them together. When you've got the pin lined up, then just press it together and make sure that it's fully seated. Now we can put the circlet back in. Now I already cleaned up these housings, but if you didn't blast them like I did, just take a screwdriver before assembling this and make sure that you clean out that groove so that the circlip is going to sit properly. Now it's the same two things for these halves, but I noticed that on mine, where the pin is supposed to be, it's not there anymore. So I don't know if maybe it just got corroded, it doesn't exist, but I'm still going to line up this where the pin is supposed to be with the hole in this part of the CHRA. Reinstall the V-band. And then since this isn't technically an official BMW repair, there's no torque spec on this V-band clamp, but it's a really small bolt. So I'm just going to use a quarter inch tool and wrench it down by hand. Now I'm going to reinstall the wastegate actuator. So I bought the new hardware kit that comes with two new bolts and this pin. I don't know why they package it together because these bolts aren't torqued to yield. I don't know why they need to be replaced, but anyway, they sell them together. So I bought this kit because as I mentioned, these cotter pins usually disintegrate into nothing. Honestly, this is the first one I've ever seen that isn't missing completely. But as you can see, it's a lot thinner than this new one. So now we just slide this onto the actuator. Position this here, two new bolts. New pin. Lastly, I just want to touch on these oil feed lines because it's really important that you replace it with an original BMW part. As you can see, there's a slight design difference between the two. This changed in about mid-2015, I believe, and the reason for the design change was that people were complaining that after the car was sitting for a couple of days, when they did a cold start, there was a little bit of smoke coming out of the exhaust. And the reason for that was because oil was just dripping down into the turbo. And then when it turned on, it burned off. With this new revision, there's a check valve here so that if the oil pump isn't flowing, there's no oil pressure, the spring tension holds the oil back and that way nothing drips down. And then there's no more smoke on startup. For the oil drain line, there's nothing special about these. So I'm going to replace it with a genuine BMW, but you can use an aftermarket part for this. No problem. Just make sure that you always replace this gasket. Now I'm going to take this plug out. Lube up the O-ring with some engine oil. Last thing is a blow off valve. Again, it has a little dowel here, so you can only put this in one way. So there you go. Good as new. Got a new turbine, new wastegate, new seals, new hoses, and all for a whole lot cheaper than replacing a whole unit. The CHRA cost me 289 US dollars for a good quality made in Germany unit. And like I mentioned, you can get them for even cheaper than that if you want to try and get the ones from China. 
The wastegate repair kit was 38 bucks, the oil feed line was 80, and the oil return line was 67, which brings us to a total of 474 US dollars for a full turbo rebuild. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, even the cheapest OE Mitsubishi replacement turbo is over $1,000, and that doesn't include any of the hoses that you need to replace. So if you compare just the turbo pricing without the hoses, the CHRA and wastegate rebuild is just over $300 versus over $1,000 to replace the whole unit. And like you guys saw in the video, there's really nothing too complicated about doing this. I mean, it was harder to get the turbo off the car than it was to rebuild it. So if you're planning on doing this job yourself anyway, then this is a great way to save a whole bunch of money. Again, this is off of the N20 from Project 328i, but the process is pretty much the same on most other BMW CHRAs, so you can use this as a guide to do other cars like the N54, N55, N63, and lots of others. If you thought this video was helpful, give us a like, and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks, guys.